Maar ik kan niet meer hangen. There you go. David Duchovny is an American actor, director, screenwriter, and producer, and his talents don't end there. Our hero has also written five published novels and three music albums. In this video, we will tell you about how this multifaceted artist began his career and how he achieved such success. David Duchovny, how Agent Mulder lives and how much he earns. David William Duchovny was born on August 7, 1960 in New York. His mother, Margaret, was an immigrant from Scotland. She worked as a teacher and administrator at the school. His father, Amram, a descendant from a Jewish family, was a writer and publicist. He has published several books, including an autobiographical novel. David's paternal grandmother emigrated from Poland at the beginning of the 20th century, and his grandfather moved from Berdichev, Kiev province, to the United States in the same period. By the way, David's grandfather was a journalist for the New York Morning Newspaper. Our hero has an older brother, Daniel, and a younger sister, Laura. Daniel connected his life with the film industry, like David, becoming a director and cinematographer. The future actor grew up a closed and uncommunicative child, but at the same time, he had brilliant mental abilities, thanks to which he received a scholarship to pay for tuition at a prestigious and expensive school in New York. Duchovny's classmate was the son of the 35th President of the United States, John F. Kennedy Jr. David was friends with John until his tragic death in a plane crash in 1999. When Duchovny was 11 years old, his parents divorced and his father went to Europe for permanent residence. This event really shocked the boy. After graduating from high school as a prefect in 1978, David entered the Department of Education at Princeton University, where the young man played as part of the university basketball and baseball teams. During his high school years, Duchovny suffered a serious injury during a basketball game, due to which he has almost no vision in his right eye and is forced to wear corrective lenses. Nevertheless, our hero didn't give up his favorite kinds of sports. David worked as a grocery delivery man, watchman, and bartender in his spare time. However, such a workload did not prevent our hero from graduating from a university with honors. Duchovny speaks fluent French, Hebrew, and Latin. In 1982, the future actor entered graduate school at Yale University, where he became a master of English literature. At that time, the guy wanted to become a writer and even became the author of several works for which he was nominated for a college award by the Academy of American Poets for outstanding work in the field of literature. Then David began to work on his PhD in philosophy, but he never completed it because he seriously thought about an acting career. From his early student years, our hero became addicted to theater and even participated in off-Broadway productions. In 1987, he was offered to appear in a commercial for Leuvenbroi beer. The filming process inspired the guy so much that he enrolled in acting classes, abandoning his doctoral studies. In 1988, Duchovny made his big-screen debut with a cameo role in a melodrama called Working Girl. The picture was awarded four Golden Globe Awards. The following year, David starred in the comedy drama New Year's Day, on the filming of which he had a fleeting love affair with Maggie Wheeler. In 1990, the young man starred in such films as Denial, Bad Influence, and Julia Has Two Lovers, and he also played drag queen and drug enforcement agent Denise Bryson in three episodes of the cult TV series Twin Peaks. The DEA's interest in you stems from allegations made by an RCMP officer that you stole drugs being used by him in a sting operation. Denise, I believe I'm being set up. On the set, the actor began a romantic relationship with actress Cheryl Lee. However, the couple soon broke up. Then, our hero starred in such films as Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, The Rapture, Ruby, Baby Snatcher, Chaplin, and Beethoven. In the latter, Duchovny played a cameo but very memorable role I mean, you're interested? Absolutely. We've smelled a lot of stuff, Giorgio, but I think I speak for myself as well as the Bremeister when I say, yours smells the best. That's great. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. You probably remember the man being dragged across the lawn by a giant St. Bernard dog. 
In the same period, David starred in a sensual film called Red Shoe Diaries and in the TV series of the same name, which was released for five seasons and was a success with the audience. The actor appeared in the image of an abandoned lover narrator, and this role was the first significant work in his career. Starting with self-respect. For the first time in my life, I feel like I have it all. Get my drift? Seriously, Red Shoes. Sometimes that's the only way out. Over the next 10 years, several sequels to Red Shoe Diaries were filmed. In 1993, Duchovny played the role of a writer in a thriller called California. According to the plot, his hero is collecting material for his new book about psychopathic criminals, one of whom he was to meet personally. First time I understood that woman as a human being. I was I was walking where she walked, where she killed. I was I was in her skin. I was looking through her eyes. In the same year, the actor began starring in the sci-fi TV series The X-Files as FBI Special Agent Fox Mulder, a conspiracy theorist who believes that his sister was abducted by aliens. Gillian Anderson, who plays the role of Dana Scully, became David's partner on the set. Who did you take off to get stuck with this detail, Scully? Actually, I'm looking forward to working with you. I've heard a lot about you. Oh, really? I was under the impression that you were sent to spy on me. At the casting, our hero showed ingenuity in order to stand out from the crowd of other contenders for the role. All candidates had to come in classic suits, which made them look exactly the same. Everyone except Duchovny, who at the last moment put on a bright yellow tie with cartoon pigs, which immediately attracted attention. David at first didn't impress TV series creator Chris Carter. His appearance seemed too standard. However, after the first auditions for the role, Carter realized that Duchovny was incomparable in the frame. In real life, the actor is a skeptic, so he assumed that the paranormal project would not last long, but the TV series became a real blockbuster. Perhaps today everyone knows the famous phrase from The X-Files, the truth is out there. A total of 11 seasons were released, and the premiere of the final season took place in 2018, 25 years after the start of the project. David himself was the central character of The X-Files for seven seasons after which he appeared in the show in separate episodes. The TV series also spawned feature films titled The X-Files and The X-Files I Want to Believe, in which Duchovny played one of the lead roles. When the actor starred in the first three seasons, he earned $150,000 per episode, which is $3.6 million annually. Starting from the fourth season, he received $240,000 per episode. That is $5.8 million per year. Today, it would be $10 million, taking into account inflation. As for feature films, David's fee was $4 million for the first film and $6 million for the second film. Let's also note that alien abduction of Mulder at the end of Season 7 was not planned, but it was a forced measure, as a conflict arose between Duchovny and the 20th Century Fox film studio. The actor filed a $25 million lawsuit against the company, arguing that under the contract he was supposed to receive 5% of the income of the TV series. As a result, he earned much less, given the fact that the project was a wild success. As a result, the lawsuit was settled for $20 million, but relations between the parties were damaged and Duchovny left the show. Nevertheless, the role of Agent Mulder brought David worldwide fame and rightfully became a cult. Many viewers and film critics confidently call this role the best in the actor's career. During his work on the TV series and films, Duchovny was nominated for many film awards, including the Saturn, Emmy, Screen Actors Guild Award, and the Golden Globe Award, the nomination for which was crowned with victory in 1997. At the same time, the actor worked on other projects. He voiced such animated TV series as Eek the Cat, Duckman Private Dick Slash Family Man, and The Simpsons. He also starred in such TV series as Frasier and The Larry Sanders Show, in which he played himself but with an imitation of attraction to the main character. Most of all, the audience remembered the last episode of this TV series where Duchovny parodied Sharon Stone's famous interrogation scene from the movie Basic Instinct. David was nominated for the Emmy Award for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Comedy Series for his role on The Larry Sanders Show. High praise was awarded not only to acting talent, but also to Duchovny's charisma. In 1996, 
People magazine included David in the 50 Most Beautiful People in the World rating, and the following year, GQ magazine named him the Man of the Year. At that time, the personal life of our hero was very eventful. He was credited with love affairs with such actresses as Perry Reeves, Sharon Stone, Dana Wheeler Nicholson, and Winona Ryder, as well as with singer Lisa Loeb. The man denied some love affairs and refused to comment on others. He frankly admitted only that he was completely incapable of building monogamous relationships. Unsurprisingly, the X-Files fans were wondering if there was a romance between the main cast of the TV series. It was said that at first, David wanted to date Jillian, but she rejected the actor and had an affair with a decorator who later became her husband. The ladies' man, offended by the refusal, called Anderson not pretty enough and unattractive. The relationship of the actors remained cool for a long time, but over time, a friendship began between them, which, according to rumors, grew into a love affair. However, none of them confirmed it seriously. In 1997, Duchovny finally found a woman with whom he wanted to tie the knot. His chosen one was actress T. Leone. They got married in the chapel at the school where David's mother taught for many years. They have two children, daughter Madeline West and son Kid Miller. Also in 1997, David starred in the mystical TV series Millennium and in the sensational drama Playing God, in which he played a surgeon. I was operating on a patient and the patient died. Is it your fault? I was under the influence of narcotics and amphetamines at the time, so yeah, you could say it was my fault. The trailer for this film intrigued viewers with explicit scenes involving Duchovny with his co-star Angelina Jolie. In fact, they were not shown in the picture. The actress said that they were cut out. The following year, our hero voiced himself in the animated TV series Dr. Katz, Professional Therapist, for which he was also a co-writer. The popularity of the actor was at its peak. In 1999, even a song was dedicated to him. Singer Bree Sharp wrote and performed a song called David Duchovny, showing sympathy and respect for the celebrity. This track became a real hit. In the early 2000s, David took part in the show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And he also appeared in the romantic comedy Return to Me, which he calls the best film in his career. Come on. Come on. Come on, I'm not doing this anymore. We're going back to eat in the kitchen. Come on. God damn it, Mel. Come on back here and eat in the kitchen like a normal person. Come on! The role in this film was offered to David by George Clooney, who was forced to abandon filming due to being busy, despite the fact that he really liked the screenplay. In 2001, Duchovny starred in the comedies Zoolander and Evolution. For the role in Evolution, he turned down the role in Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones. Then our hero starred in such films as Full Frontal, Life with Bonnie, Connie, and Carla, and House of D. In the latter, David not only played one of the roles, but also acted as a director and screenwriter. By the way, Duchovny wrote the screenplay of the film in just six days. In addition, our hero starred in an episode of Sex and the City. In 2005, the actor starred in the melodrama Trust the Man, and the following year he starred in the comedy drama The TV Set. David also voiced a character in the cartoon Queer Duck the Movie. In 2007, Duchovny starred in films such as Things We Lost in the Fire and The Secret, Si Je Te Toi, as well as in the TV series Californication, where he also acted as a director and producer. In this project, David appeared as the writer Hank Moody, who is going through a personal and creative crisis. Okay, big guy, you and me. We've never done this before, but uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. My name is Hank. The project was screened for seven seasons, and during this time, he gained a cult status. The brilliant performance of our hero in this series was highly appreciated by critics, and he was awarded the Golden Globe Award for this role. By the way, Duchovny became the first actor who managed to get this statue for his work in different genres, drama and comedy. David's fee for shooting in Californication amounted to $225,000 per episode. That is $2.7 million annually. In 2008, the actor broke up with his wife. The reason for the breakup was a pathologically increased libido of the man, which made him constantly cheat on his beloved. Duchovny underwent treatment for addiction, and a year later, the couple reunited. However, in 2011, disagreements reappeared in the family, and in 2014, the couple officially divorced. 
According to rumors, David filed for divorce after learning that T had a lover. The divorce process was peaceful, and now the former spouses are in excellent relations. During this period, the actor starred in the melodrama The Joneses and in the comedy Goats, in which he played a demented goat herd. It's funny that in this movie, Chupacabra brand beer is served in a Mexican bar. This word refers to a creature unknown to science, which David was looking for in the role of Agent Mulder in The X-Files. Then the man starred in the thriller Phantom, the drama Louder Than Words, and the TV series Aquarius. In the latter, he was also a director and producer. That's the best time to strong arm somebody before they know what they're dealing with. Don't worry, whatever I decide to do, I will leave you out of it. You don't have to worry about me. Look at you! In 2015, Duchovny tried himself in a new role. The man released a music album called Hell or High Water, for which he wrote the songs himself. The record was not popular with listeners, but David himself is not upset, because music for him is just a way to express his feelings. He has no desire to build a successful stage career. In the next few years, our hero released two more albums with which he toured the US and Europe. Duchovny donated the money he earned to an organization that supports music education. David also excelled in the literary field. In 2016, he released his first book titled Holy Cow, A Modern Day Dairy Tale. The debut edition hit the New York Times bestseller list. Subsequently, David wrote four more novels. In the same 2016, David starred in an episode of the TV series Better Things and pleased his fans with the return to the X-Files as the central character of the story. This time, the man also acted as a screenwriter and director. In the same year, the actor was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 2017, the actor returned to the role of drag queen and drug enforcement agent Denise Bryson, appearing in Twin Peaks. At the same time, there were rumors about Duchovny's new love affair. His chosen one was the former athlete Monique Pendleberry, who is 30 years younger than him. The sweethearts met in a store owned by one of the actor's friends. Monique worked there as a saleswoman. The couple hides the details of their personal lives from prying eyes and rarely appears in public. In 2020, David starred in a horror film called The Craft Legacy and the following year in an episode of the TV miniseries The Chair. The actor then starred in the comedies The Bubble and The Estate, and this year in the melodrama You People and the TV series History of the World Part 2. In the near future, he will complete work on the films What Happens Later and Bucky Effing Dent the screenplay of which is based on Duchovny's novel. Our hero is also the director of the picture. The actor will also appear in the thriller Unearthed and will star in the film adaptation of another of his novels, Truly Like Lightning, which he will direct and produce. Over the years of his career, Duchovny has voiced several computer games and collaborated with various brands. He starred in commercials for AT&T, Baum & Mercier watch brand, Samsung Galaxy smartphone, Flexa digital currency, Kaltura online event platform, and Legree Fitness. Duchovny leads a healthy lifestyle. He exercises regularly, takes vitamins, and has been a vegetarian for many years. The actor loves animals very much. In 2016, he launched an online campaign called Lick My Face to raise money for homeless animal shelters. By the way, David had four cats and three dogs as a child. The X-Files star is also an environmentalist and prefers to drive electric vehicles. He has a Ford C-Max hybrid in his garage, and for short trips, he uses a Vespa scooter. By the way, Duchovny passed the exam for a driver license on the second attempt at the age of 27, and his first car was a 1972 Dodge Dart, which he bought for $500. He also owned Toyota and BMW cars. To date, the state of the celebrity is estimated at $80 million, which he spends on real estate. At one time, the actor owned a villa in Malibu with ocean and mountain views. He lived there with his wife and children. The 2,000-square-foot estate includes five bedrooms, five bathrooms, a kitchen, a dining room, and several living rooms. Also, on the 2.2-hectare plot of land are a guest and beach houses, as well as a three-car garage and two swimming pools. In 2008, Duchovny sold the property to Mel Gibson for $11.5 million. After that, David bought an apartment in Manhattan for $6.25 million. 
This real estate was once three separate art studios that have been converted into a living space with five bedrooms, a studio kitchen, a living room, and an outdoor terrace. In 2013, the apartment was put up for sale for $9.25 million. In 2012, the actor bought another modern apartment in New York for $6.25 million. The apartment includes three bedrooms with panoramic views of Central Park, three bathrooms, a kitchen, a living room, a gym, an office, a mini library, and an outdoor terrace. In 2021, Duchovny put the apartment up for sale for $7.5 million. David also owns an unusual house in Malibu. The actor converted a train car into a living space. Colleagues speak of the actor as a friendly and pleasant person. Duchovny himself admits that he likes to be in the spotlight. He gladly uses his popularity to get free sportswear or sit in the front row during a basketball game. To date, the filmography of our hero includes about 80 films. Which David Duchovny's movie do you like the most? It was wonderful to see you both. <laughs> Good night. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.